today we have a special surprise. Shannon is going to distribute some bubble wands. And everybody who wants one gets one. Uh, there's going to be some special instructions. We're going to have a special word. So everybody is to listen for the word joy. And when you hear that word, that's when you let your bubbles fly. And we want to make sure that we're putting the bubbles towards the center of the room so we don't get bubble juice on these beautiful wall hangings. So as soon as they are distributed, we will commence with the next part. You. So I have a story for the Time for All Ages today, and it is called Joy. There you go. <laughs> Um, it's a story that was told by Reverend Dr. Lynn Unger, and she tells the story of a UU minister, Bill Clark. And he talks about being at the beach after a really long, hard day. The past many months had been particularly difficult for him. He was exhausted and sad, and he was wondering how he could possibly go on. Then, across what he thought was an empty beach, Bill heard something. He heard a woman shouting, but it quickly became clear that she wasn't in trouble. In fact, what she was shouting over and over again was, joy, joy. All of a sudden, something shifted in Bill's heart. It was almost a revelation. It was possible to choose joy even in the midst of great difficulty. It was possible to be so committed to joy, so overwhelmed by joy, <laughs> that you would need to shout it to the very wind and waves. Well, touched as he was by the stranger's declaration of joy, Bill decided to join in. Joy, he called to the woman. Joy, he called to the seagulls. Joy, he called to the sand and the sea. Joy. And each time he called out, he felt his heart lifting. Each time he called out, he felt more connection with this stranger and threw her to the whole world of people trying to find their own joy. <laughs> and then you know what happened? A damp and sandy golden retriever came running from behind a sand dune, dashed up to the woman, joy, there you are. <laughs> It's time to go home. And with that, the woman leashed up her dog, Joy, and <laughs> headed off. Now, there are lots of reasons to love this story, and not just because there's a dog in it. <laughs> Although it's about a kind of mistaken identity, I think it really has a lot to say about finding joy. For one thing, Joy doesn't always come when it's called. There are lots of reasons that make us feel as if joy has fled the scene. Illness, injury, lost friendships or loved ones, boring work, teachers or bosses who don't understand or appreciate us. The list of things that can rob us of joy is pretty much endless. And when we've lost our sense of joy, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily come rushing back the instant that we notice it's gone. And it certainly doesn't help for other people to tell us to smile or that we should just get over whatever it is that's bothering us. You can't be bullied into or talked into feeling joy. <laughs> 
And sometimes it just doesn't respond when you call. But maybe calling does make a difference. Believing that joy is out there, knowing that you want to walk together, finding a way to let joy know that you are available might just eventually work. Maybe not by hollering joy at random strangers, but by remembering and turning toward the things that have given you joy in the past. Things like dancing and singing, going for a walk, reading a good book, talking and being silly with friends, and eating chocolate. <laughs> I bet you have other good ideas of things that have brought you joy. Joy doesn't always come when you call, but it comes sooner if you let it know where to find you. And you can't, and if you can't find joy, maybe you could start by looking for some of its friends and relatives. For instance, gratitude often hangs out with joy. And if you can't find your way to gratitude, you might keep your eyes open for wonder and amazement. Surprisingly, detachment, while not a relative of joy, detachment lives in the same house. You will not be able to get through the door unless you leave behind a whole bunch of expectations about how things need to be. The house of detachment has a very narrow front entry hall with no room to bring your baggage about how the world needs to follow your rules. But if you can leave that baggage at the doorstep, you will not only find the house is like Doctor Who's TARDIS, bigger on the inside, you might also discover that Joy is drinking tea in the kitchen. Now, I can't guarantee that any of these suggestions will lead you straight to Joy. There are times you might very well feel as if Joy has run off entirely and moved in with someone else. But generally speaking, if you are willing to call out to joy long enough, eventually it will show up, wet and sandy, tongue hanging out of the side of its mouth, ready to romp with you all the way home. And, you know, hold on to those. There's going to be more joy throughout the rest of the day. <laughs> so much is going on in the world at large and in our personal lives that can be challenging to navigate. Activist Valerie Carr reminds us that in the face of horrors visited upon our world daily in the struggle to protect our loved ones, choosing to let in joy, you can keep going if you want to, <laughs> is a revolutionary act. That is worth repeating. Choosing to let joy in is a revolutionary act. It returns us to everything that is good and beautiful and worth fighting for. And I want to assure you that making room for joy does not cancel out the array of feelings you may be holding regarding the circumstances of the world. Rather, making room for joy to arrive as a declaration and a reminder that choosing joy is an act of resistance. And friends, I think we're going to need to remember that a lot in the coming days and weeks and years. It's an act that says despite challenge, despite hurt and confusion, I will not let hardship have the final voice. After all, this joy that we are was not given to us by the events of the world, and the world cannot take it away. And for that very reason, it made sense to me to carve out some time this morning to focus on joy and bring it front and center. You know, and what is joy anyway? You know, we've been talking about it, we've been singing about it, we've been blowing bubbles about it all morning. But really, what is it? 
And I'm guessing that you all know it when you feel it. And I came across a definition that described joy as a state of mind and an orientation of the heart. And I really like that idea, an orientation of the heart. The Time for All Ages story reminded us that joy does not always come when it's called. We cannot be talked into feeling joy. Joy doesn't stand by to be had at our beck and call, but the circumstances for evoking joy can be cultivated. Happiness, which is a close relative to joy, tends to be an emotion that is externally triggered. A psychologist Rachel Fernley says that happiness is generally based on other people, things, places, thoughts, and events that occur, occur outside of ourselves. Joy, on the other hand, comes when we look inside, when we are able to make peace with who we are, why we are, and how we are in the world. And making peace with ourselves can be a process. It takes cultivation. It takes a conscious choice to orient ourselves in such a way that we are willing to open ourselves to the wonder and goodness that we are and the wonder and goodness that exists around us, even when that might be hard to find. And I think that's something that children instinctively know. And I think that's why it's so often very easy uh, when we see children that we have our faces light up to feel joy when we're around young children because we see babies and little children exploring the world with real openness and delight. It reminds us of our own innate orientation to wonder. Young children have not yet made that shift from their unconditioned understanding that they are indeed wonder and goodness incarnate. They have not yet abandoned their inner compass to the dictates of the world. They make room for joy to arrive all the time. And if you think about it, little children, you know, oh, there's a leaf, how wonderful. There's a rotten apple, you know, I mean, it can be anything. Um, my grandson loves dinosaurs. <laughs> Hi, Dino. As adults, it takes a willingness to leave behind the harsh judgments of ourselves and all the expectations that we use to should ourselves and the world at large into being something that simply may not be as we wish it would be. And I'm endlessly grateful for the gift that this path of ministry has given me. I'm responding to, I'm saying yes to an inner calling that was tugging at me for decades. And through this experience, I have come to make peace with the fact that I am not perfect. And I know that's a shocking revelation. <laughs> I long to do my best, to be well received, to make positive differences in the lives of others. But I make mistakes. I say things that are not perfectly delivered. I may not live up to everyone's expectations, but I'm coming to embrace the fullness of who I am. I'm making peace with who I am, why I am the person I am, how I show up in the world. Making peace with myself allows me to extend the gift of grace to others as well. And this sense of inner alignment does indeed open the door so that I can spot joy sitting at my kitchen table drinking tea with increasing frequency. And while joy is something that cannot be certain to come when we call, I do believe that it's contagious. When one person opens themselves to the expression of joy within their lives, I believe that the invitation is made to those around us to do the same. Just like the bubbles here this morning, a simple invitation to just be present with that moment, to make room for wonder, for delight, for joy to arrive. So we're gonna try a little experiment right now. We're going to open the service up so that you can call out to joy. 
so you can share with this beloved community what brings you joy, or perhaps give voice in some fashion to the wonder and goodness that you already are. And this might feel risky. It may feel a little uncomfortable, but I absolutely believe that your willingness to call out to joy will invite joy to show up. Like the dog in the story, wet and sandy, tongue hanging out the side of its mouth, ready to romp with you all the way home. So anybody who wants to call out to joy, what brings you joy in the world, you can just shout it out. And folks at home, if you wanna put it in the chat, Jeremy will let us know and I'll repeat it. So who's gonna be brave enough to call out to joy right now? Books. Books. Say that again. Sunshine. Sunshine. Yep. Say it again. Running after balls. Running after balls. <laughs> Flowers. Yeah. You lost your tooth. Yay! <laughs> Anybody else you want to call out to joy this morning? Children's laughter. Raspberry ice cream. Yeah. Anybody in on chat? Yep. We got uh, friends and family. Friends and family. Flowers. Flowers. Potlucks. Potlucks. U U G. Anybody else want to call out to joy this morning? Say that one more time. Mermaids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah, and loving one another. So if you haven't publicly shared your joy this morning, I invite you to take some time today and at some point during this day, share it with somebody else. Let them know what brings you joy. And I'm gonna leave you with a quote by Valerie Carr, another quote, we can't force joy, but we can make space for it. May we look up at that night sky. May we let joy in, for we will be someone's ancestors one day. If we show up with our whole hearts, they will inherit not our fear, but bravery born of joy. May that be so.